First, we should make for the southern outpost. Desai's men hold it for now, but my fellows in the Deliverance have been fighting to reclaim it. The Deliverance hideout lies beyond the outpost. We'd best prepare ourselves for a long journey. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. Last time, our heroes learned of King Lima's untimely death to Chancellor Desai and the ongoing war between the Deliverance and Regellian invaders. This time, we begin our journey as new members of the Deliverance. But first, I want to take a look at the world map. Echoes is one of the few Fire Emblem games to feature an interactive world map that resembles the level selection system you would see in the new Super Mario Bros. series. Before each battle, we get a glimpse of what class the map's bosses as well as the army's overall rating and how many units there are. More importantly, the world map tells us exactly how many fights we have remaining in an act. Since Echoes doesn't have a traditional chapter by chapter progression, newcomers in the game can spot the midpoint of an act and establish personal goals or benchmarks for their units before the final stretch. The midpoint of Act 1 is a southern outpost. For this playthrough, my goal is to get Lucas promoted to a knight as soon as we complete the attack on the southern outpost. Without grinding at the Thief Shrine, I need to be especially prudent when allocating my experience. If I'm not careful, Lucas may end exactly one experience point short of level 7. For now, let's pay attention to the battle ahead of us. The fight in Ram Woods and Fleecer's Force don't allow us to change our unit's positions before the fight. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that here on the world map. Oi, travelers! Afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to stop right there. These here woods belong to me and my boys, see? So if you want to be passing through, you're gonna have to pay the toll. <laughs> well, that didn't take long. <laughs> Brigands already? But it's only been minutes. We're still within sight of the gates. Worse surprises than this await us all. Is everyone ready? <laughs> Yes. Come on. Let's clear this rabble out. Follow me. I'll clear us a path. Oh, um, if I may, you mustn't rush headlong into battles on your own. Without experience, your friends will never grow into accomplished fighters. Trust them. Give them something to do. At least let them deal the final blow. <sighs> right. That's good advice. I'll give it a try. Thanks, Lucas, for the advice. And good advice it is. If we check out our villagers, Gray stands out, being level 5 and a much more competent fighter than the rest. Compared to Cliff, Faye, and Tobin, Gray doesn't really need any experience. In fact, he's ready to promote from the get-go, so extra experience for him won't do him much good. So we'll have him weaken some enemies alongside Alm and Lucas for the others to get some kills. First, we'll move Alm and Lucas into the forest for some extra avoid. Allow me. Because I swapped Faye and Cliff's ordering before this battle, they can move closer to Alm to earn some support points. To maximize our experience throughput, Tobin will fight one Brigand on enemy face.
Finally, Cliff and Gray advance so they can earn support with Tobin. Come at me, fools! You can't touch me! From my playstyle, you'll notice how I like to group my units together in one blob. And this is due to a couple of reasons. First, movement in Echoes is not as free compared to other Fire Emblem games. It lacks the rescue drop mechanic from the GBA games, pair up from Fates and Awakening, and a conventional dancer. All you really have for advanced movement tech are combat arts and white magic spells. Second. I want to earn as many support points as I can in these early battles, and that's only possible if my units fight within two spaces of each other. That's really unfortunate. Because all misses attack, not only did he change my strategy, but also the script I had. But that's the nature of Fire Emblem. So I'll have to do some calculations and figure out another way to position my units to earn as much experience as possible. <laughs> If Alm hadn't missed, this brigand would have retreated to the northwestern supply tile, but instead chooses to attack Fey. This is actually a blessing in disguise, because it lets Fey earn just a little bit more experience. Yeah, I got it. But now I have to figure out how to take out these last two brigands while maximizing the amount of experience and support points I'm getting. Okay, I'm ready!
I finally decide on weakening the Lower Brigand with Lucas, so that Cliff can snag a kill. Get it up, damn you! Very amusing, full marks. Gray moves north so that he can earn some support points with Tobin. You'd better heal. Finally, Faye finishes the job. Gotcha. That was invigorating. Yes! We won! That was some fine swordsmanship, Alm. I can see you have more than a bit of your grandfather in you. <laughs> you think so?